Hey guys, it's Brett and welcome back to my channel. So a couple weeks ago, I saw Joanna Cedia do this video where she kind of went through like a playlist of her life, like all the her favorite artists and their favorite songs by them and everything, and she did this whole dress up thing. It was great and it also inspired me to do the same because I was already thinking about doing a video where I broke down like my favorite songs of my whole life but then I saw her go above and beyond the expectations per usual and now I want to do the same. How I'm going to do the same I don't know because I own one blonde wig and about like 20 black t-shirts. Anyway, so that's what we're doing today. I'm going to break down the music of my life. <laughs> So, since the moment I was birthed, I think I was listening to Shania Twain. I can't really remember um, much else from my childhood except for every single Shania Twain lyric. Um, test me, please. <laughs> it's hard for me to pick like a single favorite, but I've always said that uh, From This Moment On was going to be my wedding song, so I guess um, I'm pretty, pretty connected to that one. Also, growing up, I would watch an episode of Hannah Montana like every Saturday when it was on TV. So my Cyrus, Hannah Montana, they're also like a pretty big staple in my childhood. Rockstar, Nobody's Perfect, Let, Let's Dance are often enjoyed by my eardrums to this day. So, there you go. <laughs> um, and then the darkness began. My sister started getting a little older, a little braver going into the vast music industry. I think it all kind of began with like the very tame Carrie Underwood. In fact, I think Before He Cheats was the first video I ever watched on YouTube. And I was so confused. I'm like, what the heck is this website? What is going on? Then shortly after came Taylor Swift. You Belong With Me is forever just, I keep saying this, but it's just a staple in my mind from my childhood. The music video blew my tiny little brain away. Um, and from there, things really started getting wild, okay? Uh, I still remember the day my sister showed me the Kesha songs she downloaded on her iPod. They were far from the kind of music that my parents had pre-approved for us to listen to, but I loved it. Everything Kesha, Lady Gaga, all the time. It was so scandalous, but I couldn't get enough. Then my sister and I also watched Rihanna's Disturbia video on YouTube. This led to a YouTube ban in my household. <laughs> Um, but the damage was already done. My transition from the innocence, Shania Twain, Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, and all that, um, and into the pop world was underway. Everywhere I went, I was discovering new songs, new artists, everything. Um, I remember Beyonce's I Am Sasha Fierce album, so like Halo, If I Were a Boy, Single Ladies, and Nicki Minaj was getting features on things, and Super Bass came out shortly after. Uh, the Pussycat Dolls were everywhere. I, <laughs> I'll never forget the time watching New Year's Rockin' Eve and their performance of When I Grow Up. It was so, again, I keep using the word scandalous, but I have nothing better to describe these artists. It was so scandalous for my young brain, but um, I was fully enjoying it. Then there was Britney Spears. Uh, obviously, I was a little bit late to this train, but, uh, you know, the songs were still everywhere. If You Seek Amy, I definitely didn't understand at the time, but I loved it anyway. <laughs> I was a little confused why she was saying, if you seek Amy, like, who's looking for Amy? But <laughs> I get it now. Then Katy Perry, uh, where do I even start, okay? No matter how hard I look, I can't find this performance, which really just made me fall in love with her and her music. Uh, she was performing I Kissed a Girl on some awards show, and there were, like, giant fruit around. Very upsetting to the older people in my household, but I... I love that performance. Kelly Clarkson, also, even though I knew nothing of love or heartache or anything such as that, these songs hit me somewhere in the heart. So much to my parents' dismay, I was downloading songs like crazy. Songs that I definitely didn't understand the lyrics to, but I also didn't care. Um, they just sounded good. And the yeehaw had left me, okay? <laughs> I pretty much stayed just in this little pop bubble then. Not getting into many artists, just kind of listening to what the radio was playing and stuff like that for years and years. Then my sister introduced me to One Direction, which led me to Cher Lloyd. That also later led me to Lil Mix. And all of their debut albums were just flawless to me. But um, I guess a really standout that takes me back to that time in my life would be Want You Back. Then, like a few years later or whatever, as I was watching The X Factor US, Demi Lovato was a judge and she released Heart Attack, and I was hooked. Okay, I couldn't get enough. Fell in love with all her music, her personality, everything. I was just 
a down a rabbit hole, and that was really the first time I ever would consider myself like a dedicated fan of somebody. Um, and Snowball kind of just continued from there. Uh, now that I had experienced how fun it was to be a fan of somebody, rather than just knowing like what the radio played, obviously, I started to find more artists that I really fell in love with. Now we have the real stuff. After watching one single live performance of Tattooed Heart, <laughs> Ariana Grande had me hooked. After releasing the self-titled Beyonce album, I was hooked. Little Mix owned my entire life with the Salute album. Jessie J rocked my world with Sweet Talker. Iggy Azalea owned a good year of my life after releasing the new classic. After that, again, I stayed pretty much within that bubble of artists. Not really experiencing any new people, just kind of listening to my childhood and the artists I just discovered, which was I mean, pretty much just the, the pop world at the time, so it's not that weird. Then, finally, 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 end of 2018, beginning of 2019, so like six months ago, I listened to, um, I finally listened to all the albums from Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, Christina Aguilera, Whitney Houston, you know, all the big people that, like, everybody knows, but I didn't really listen to. Why I never did this sooner, I don't know, but my ears were blessed, okay? So I kind of got into them. And then, most recently, I was just thrown back into my Yeehaw roots as I discovered Casey Musgraves. I was amazed. Couldn't get enough. Every playlist of mine on Spotify is just littered with Casey Musgraves songs, and I don't regret a thing. Now, there are obviously, and that's right about where uh, my music journey story ends. I am just all the time Casey Musgraves. <laughs> now, there are obviously other artists which I like songs by, or I like them kind of, you know, and stuff like that. I would say these people I listed are like pretty much the um, strongest memories I have, uh, or have memories linked to in my life, you know what I mean? Thank you for watching, and remember what well, ye's around, haws around. <laughs> Oh no, that's really bad. Well, it comes around, goes around, because I'm right back in my yeehaw life, but, um, that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, I guess that's all I have for you today, then. Thank you for enjoying my music journey with me with my singular blonde wig, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.